Hello viewers, SuperGT here. So recently, I was challenged to a 1v1 race around not quite Rust, but the equivalent on Gran Turismo. So I am going to be racing against a chap called James Baldwin, who is in fact the world's fastest gamer. So he won a competition very recently called World's Fastest Gamer up against some of the very best uh, racing game players in the world. He came out on top. He is now the World's Fastest Gamer of Season 2. And uh, next year he's going to be racing in GT4 cars, actually. That, that was the prize. So he'll be racing for real, in real race cars. But the real challenge for him comes now. A 1v1 against Super GT. So we've come to Nürburgring GP circuit. I was allowed to choose the track and the car. You can see here we've maxed out the power. It's an absolute monster in terms of power. And we've minimized the weight. So this car, the Mercedes Group 3, can normally do like a 156 around here. With this setup, we can do like a 148, 149. So first up, qualifying. We, we're going to do one lap each. So one, one shot qualifying to see who's going to be on pole position. Not that pole position will matter a huge amount because we, uh, you know, this is Gran Turismo and on this game we have very strong slipstream so it'll be very difficult I think for one of us to escape from the other during the race but it will be a good barometer to see how our respective speed is. So this is my flying lap here, so just one lap as we said bit, so it'll be very interesting to see who is the quicker out of the two and uh, I do have a slight advantage in the sense that um, this isn't his main game actually James is actually really quick on many games. I, I'd say I think F1 is his main game but he's also had success in Gran Turismo in uh, Project Cars and um, I'm not sure about other sims and race uh, racing games but I'm sure he would be very good in others as well. So he, he's very talented, very quick and uh, in the series so far so he's doing a 1v1 series essentially he has beaten Ben Daly on F1 uh, and he lost to Jimmy Broadbent on iRacing. So for him at the moment, it's 1-1. I'm going to look to avenge Ben Daly for the YouTubers and uh, put another loss on James's record. And uh, as we come up through Schumacher S into the next couple of corners here, it feels like a good lap so far. And that is pretty much the reason why I chose this car and this track, because I think Nürburgring GP, is, for me, is my, my favourite track. It's my best track. It's the one I go around the best out of all the tracks available in Gran Turismo. So I'm trying to give myself the best possible chance of trying to win this race. Coming up into the final chicane, using the mega strat here of using pretty much all of the curb plus the mastery turf. And coming up then into the final corner, we're going to set our time in about 10 seconds time. Or 5 seconds time. Coming through there, a little bit wide actually, lost a couple of tenths maybe through that final corner. Straight line to the line. It's a 149.3, just shy of a 4. So, we're going to wait a couple of seconds here for James to come through. And he's going to set a time one-tenth slower. So, really close. Really, really close. And actually, I think, really good for him because um, I don't think he did quite as much practice as I did. Although we both only did maybe 5 to 10 minutes. Um, but I was the one who set all of the settings, of course. Okay then, here it is, a 1v1, Veloce James up against F4H Super GT, six laps around the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. Super GT up against the world's fastest gamer, obviously if he loses then, does that make me the world's fastest gamer? I guess, I guess it does, it doesn't, but let's just go along with it. Okay, so we're going to ride on board with both cars throughout the course of the race, as this is going to be a very interesting and a close one. As we said, the slipstream is strong on this game, and we've said it's a strong, so it's going to be almost impossible to try to pull away unless one of the drivers gets sent to the Shadow Realm. So we do have the early advantage of the track position, so I'm going to have to really get my defensive mindset out and just try, really try to block him. You see here, when the suck forces get engaged, look at that, look how quickly you start gaining. The gap was almost there. He looked up the inside and just managed to cover him off just in time. So out of turn six, down towards the hairpin at the bottom of the hill for the first time. And already he's right on my tail. I'm going to go right to the right-hand side and cover him off. He's gone very deep, actually. Almost off the circuit. He's very close, actually. 
to already sending himself into the Shadow Realm. But thankfully on this occasion for him, just keeps it under control through the Schumacher S for the first time. He's right on my tail, very, very close indeed. I'm just going to stay to the left here, completely defend. And uh, as we come into this chicane here, it's very, very close indeed. But this is, this is where it gets really tricky to defend on this lap because you've got a pretty much the longest flat out section on the circuit and it's very tough to know which side to defend. I covered the left, which would be the inside for the upcoming chicane, which is the side you want, but he had the inside for the kink on the straight, so he gets ahead. So okay, rolls reverse here. Now I just have to make sure that he doesn't get too far ahead. So I have to really tuck into that slipstream the best I can and just make sure he doesn't get away at all. So you see that already as um, as we come out of the final turn, the slipstream just gets engaged. It's like DRS essentially. And coming down into the first corner, I'm just about able to sweep in ahead and retake the lead with uh, five laps to go. If you want to watch the uh, commentated version, the live commentated version, then do have a look at James's channel. You should have a look at his channel anyway. He makes very interesting videos. It's really good to watch his vlogs of the World's Fastest Gamer competition. Um, but he's, he also makes a lot of similar content. He, he plays many different games. He's very quick at all of them. And, of course, next year, like we said earlier, he's going to be a real racing driver. He's going to be driving GT4 cars for a whole season. That was the prize for winning the World's Fastest Gamer competition. So anyway, that's you know that's an awesome prize, and um, I, I have no doubt he's going to uh, vlog that and showcase his his talent in the car with some videos as well. So it'd be interesting to tune into that and see how that goes for him. I have no doubt that he can uh, do well in in those cars, as uh, he's, he's he's someone that it looks like he can adapt very quickly to different games very well. Not many um, sim races. I think, well, a lot of sim racers tend to stick to one game or one sim, the one that they're best at, and not not too many try out different ones. But he is one that has, has, has tried out a range of racing games. And he's actually had success across multiple titles. But here, you see, I tried to defend this time by going to the right. He gets the inside, so it's really difficult to defend that straight. Really, really difficult. So as we were going around this race, we were kind of uh, really discussing the tactics because it... It, was, it became quite abundantly clear at this point of the race that it almost didn't matter who was in front during these laps. It really became about who was going to be in the right place at the right time on the final lap. So you're really just building up to that. But during the course of these first laps here, you're just trying to gauge the other driver, trying to work out what their strengths and their weaknesses are and where you can and can't defend or the strategy that's going to have to be employed on that last lap because it isn't just going to be a straight up uh, normal race you'd really have to kind of tr play this one quite tactically maybe backing up your opponent at the right moment uh, so that they can't get a slingshot on you with the slipstream so it's really just trying to negate that slipstream which is just so strong as we've said a billion times you can see here side by side battling it's almost like Alonso Massa back in what was it 2007 coming down the hill then I'm defended I'm going to cover him off best I can he's gonna gone deep again and he's almost caught off um, but he can cut back for that uh, later drive out of the, um, the the hairpin there now with the different setups so we're running we're not running balance of performance here we are running the exact same setup though so we've got maximum power which is I think nearly 700 brake horsepower and normally it's about 400 or 500 and then we've gone for minimum weight so this car is a good 7-8 seconds quicker per lap than it normally is with the balance of performance on. So look at the slingshot here. It's almost impossible to defend against it. As we come up towards the chicane, side by side, be a brave one to try to keep that one around the outside, I think. So it's best just to tuck in behind. And we do actually get a good run off the corner. We're going to go for the move coming up into the final turn. So that's actually quite interesting there because, again, we were talking about the tactics... And it looked like whoever got into the chicane first would win the race, but then it shows you there that it's actually possible still to overtake the final corner as he goes up the inside on the main straight. It was almost a Schumacher versus Barrichello incident down at Hungary, very close to the wall, just realising time that he was going to go that side. So he retakes the lead. Half of the race is done, and it's getting very hot and interesting now. Getting uh, fully sweat, sweat mode is, is, is fully engaged as uh, if you watch, again, watch the live commentary version, 
on his channel and you'll see that we went a little bit quieter towards the end of the race as we got as we realized that we got to the uh, the business end it's actually smashing to the rear end going into turn five but he continues keep the car under control so on the exit of turn six using plenty of the extra runoff available is he going to defend yes he is move to the right hand side so this is kind of all research for the final lap just trying to work out where you can and can't defend so that that one can easily be defended it's, it's coming down towards that chicane that's the, that's the key place i think on this whole race we've, uh, we've both kind of worked that out it's all going to come down to that um, so just trying to force him narrow and uh, he doesn't really fall for it he's actually really sort of very good with that so often i try to keep people narrow on the left hand side and he didn't really budge at all he just he kept his call cool, didn't really make a mistake I'm a little bit further away this time, but you see the slingshot that is available. In fact, it's probably better to be that far back. So I'm going to go to the right-hand side. Is it going to be enough to sweep around the outside? We are going to go through here side by side, which isn't ideal. And we just leave each other enough, uh, leave each other enough space. And that is the thing I would say about this race. It was really enjoyable because sometimes you race with people... You know, you'll, you'll have this online in Gran Turismo and, and many other games where you just come across people... Uh, that you just know that they're going to race fairly with you and it's um, it's always good that you can push each other to the limit but not beyond it sometimes you go beyond it sort of by accident um, because you're always trying to push the limits but it's always good to be in a really close four but fair race and this is very much that uh, so lap five we've got less than two to go so getting towards the end now no one's able to get away really and that's been the case in the last two races that he's done so one against Jimmy Broadbent, it was very close throughout. And the one against Ben Daly, they were never more than a few seconds apart. Well, I think actually pretty much nose to tell for the entire thing. So it's actually a um, testament to his skill, I think, that he can, again, do well on iRacing. Up against Jimmy, he was racing in the LMP1 class around Interlagos. And that is quite a tricky class to get hold of, to, to get good at quickly because you've got to engage the uh, the boost you've got to work out how to use the boost and uh, that does take time and practice to get used to um, and then in f1 of course you've got all the ers settings there's so many modes to get used to in in f1 and you've got to be constantly changing it all on a almost corner by corner basis which is why in many ways i do like the simplicity of branch risk mode where you don't have to worry about a billion different things so this time he doesn't quite get the slingshot quite interestingly off of that corner and I'm, I'm actually able to defend, but he just sweeps around the outside. I braked a tiny bit too early, and he's made the move completely work. So an interesting one there. I defended it. I, I kept him behind, but then he just did a really good move around the outside on the brakes. I did brake a tiny bit too early, didn't pressure him enough into a mistake. But here we go then, final lap, lap six of six. He's going to go fully to the right-hand side. He wants to defend this one all the way to the end into turn one am i able to go around the outside looking at the radar one eye on one way uh, one eye on the road one eye on his car and if i had another eye i'd be looking at the radar as well but i um you know unfortunately i only have two eyes and that would be a bit of an advantage if i could somehow get a third eye but that that isn't quite a possibility at this moment so i have to use just the two i have available so come into this one i'm going to poke up the inside up into turn five and on the brakes, he's just gone a little bit too deep. The pressure of the race against Super GT, and he's bottled it completely. So you thought Super GT on lap six as well, we're going to bottle it. But no, it's Veloce James. He's actually gone completely wide. There was a couple of moments early in the race as well where it looked as if he was very close to going off the tracks, uh, particularly down at this hairpin down here. So now it's a case of just bring it home and make sure you don't do, th do anything really stupid. And it looks like I'm going to, going to become the world's fastest gamer. I think we have to take that title away from him and um, hand that race drive over to me instead. But coming through uh, turn 10 onto the back straight and he's nowhere to be seen. I think he lost a good five or six seconds there. As we come up into the chicane, for the final time. It's a shame they didn't come down to this final battle because I think it would have been really interesting to see exactly how this would have gone down because I, it's almost like a lottery as to who would have won it, I think. But uh, do let me know what you what you think might have happened, but it's really hard to predict. 
By coming through the final corner, get in there, Lewis. Fantastic drive, mate. You are the world's fastest gamer. And here comes Veloce James a couple of seconds later. Commiserations. It was a really good race, though. And uh, we are separated by five and a half seconds. But to be fair, it probably would have been less than half a second if it had gone down to the wire like we would have liked. But there we go. A victory for Super GT. Veloce James has been defeated 2-1 to the big pleb YouTubers. So Jimmy and Super GT have both defeated him. But to be fair, he's going against... Well, he's going up against us when we can choose all the races, the cars, the tracks, and the game. Uh, so he's making it hard for himself, so fair play to him. But that is it for this one. I do hope you enjoyed it. Do check out James's channel. I've linked it in the description and also his version of this video with all the live commentary. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah.